here. So today I am going to be making a vegan mushroom pot pie. Um, I have not made this recipe before, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, as per usual, I'll start by getting the ingredients and things out and we'll just figure it out from there. All right, first things first, needed to clean off my work surface. I do this a lot. <laughs> Usually before I, you know, <laughs> uh, actually pull out the recipe and whatnot, but today I didn't. So, anywho, got it cleaned up. Then I um, started pulling out all the ingredients that this recipe called for. Um, I'll do my best to find this recipe again and <laughs> link it in the description down below for anyone who wants to try to make it. Um, I will say it took at least two hours start to finish. Um, and it wasn't really downtime. It was a lot of active time. Um, so for that reason, I won't be making it again. It did turn out good, um, but man, I just, at this season of my life, I have other things I would rather spend two hours doing. I don't mind making long recipes, but usually it's when they take a long time to cook, you know, in the oven or on the stove. They need to simmer for a long time, not active babysitting the stove time. But anywho, the first step was to get started on a broth. And this broth um, called for one stalk of celery cut in half and then half of one carrot as well. So I didn't really know the best way to do that. I think I ended up cutting it lengthwise down the middle. But um, the carrot did need to be peeled, so I peeled that and set it to the side. Um, same thing with the rest of the carrots. They're going to go in the regular portion of the pot pie. This broth was really to get started making the sauce um, or that's going to go over the, the filling of the pot pie. It also needed half of an onion and some seasonings. I can't quite remember what all they were. I know it called for thyme and um, salt and pepper um, and dried mushrooms were in there as well. I think they were porcini mushrooms. But uh, as always, you know, a little water duty. <laughs> needed to hook a person up with a beverage. But um, the next step was going to be, oh, garlic went in the broth too. And I did already get that started on the stove, although I forgot to put the garlic in. Um, all of those veggie scraps I'll be saving for stock. So I just keep them in a little bowl. Um, and then it wanted a fine dice on the carrot, um, or rather the rest of the carrots as well as the other half of that onion so I was just trying to get those chopped up and kind of out of the way um, so that I could work on the next step and be prepared so that's the rest of those two stalks of celery getting kind of the same treatment just dicing them up and putting them aside And some garlic too. I consulted the recipe to see when the garlic needed to be added in um, based on the instructions and I just added, I put it in that little bowl, whichever one it was that needed it. Now I did have to wash of course these mushrooms and I washed them very thoroughly because mushrooms are gross. I mean not gross to eat but they're really dirty, okay? <laughs> So I wash my uh, mushrooms thoroughly under cold water and then I just put them out on this um, dish mat to sort of dry a little um, until I get them all cleaned. Um, that one escaped me a little bit <laughs> to go chase that mushroom down. Um, but these it called to quarter them and put them in a large pan with two tablespoons of oil. 
I did not have a large clean pan at the time, so small pan it was, and this added to the length of time that I was actively working on this recipe. Um, if you do decide to make this, I highly recommend <laughs> using the biggest, you know, skillet that you have for this, because the fewer batches of mushrooms that you end up having to cook, the better. You can't overcrowd the pan, otherwise they will not brown in the same way. Like if I had put all these in there, yes, they would have cooked, but it wouldn't have you know, turned brown on the side and really gotten that depth of flavor that you would want <laughs> out of this. So, um, yeah, babysitting the pan, not a fan. Um, it, it was quite time consuming. Um, the recipe essentially said, you know, um, put them in a single layer, wait five minutes, without moving them around and then pardon me I'm yawning it's late it's late now it wasn't late when I was making it but it's late now anywho um wait five minutes and then turn them again and wait another five minutes um it was incredibly fiddly getting these things to turn and face you know on a new direction um it was good. It's just this recipe is annoying. So there I am patiently waiting with more olive oil because I know that I'm going to need to replenish that for each batch because um, the, you know, mushrooms that I'm putting in there do use up olive oil or uh, not use up, soak up. Um, and I added salt and pepper to each batch as well. The salt helps draw the moisture out of the mushrooms and the pepper for flavor. Um, and then I made myself a beverage. <laughs> I think it was coffee. Could have been tea, though. Um, but, you know, needed a little something while I'm sitting there waiting. Um, and... Honestly, four minutes of wait time, just it's not enough to do a whole lot by the time I got them all arranged on there. So I just ended up standing. Adds to my irritation of making this, to be honest. <laughs> so, oh well, here we are, being patient, waiting. Um, now the broth in the back, you might be able to see, is really boiling. And I was supposed to put a lid on that, but I forgot until just then. <laughs> So I went ahead and got a lid on that. Um, now, there were two types of mushrooms that I used. The recipe definitely called for three, but I could not find whatever the other option was um, at my local grocery stores. Um, that was a little dance party. Um, probably the Ninja Turtles theme song again. But... Um, I did get Baby Bella's and shiitake were the kinds that I was able to find. And the shiitake were already sliced, so I just washed them off good anyway. And then I just put them, you know, sliced here in the pan, um, which did make it easier for flipping. <laughs> the ones that it asked me to quarter um, were actually the most annoying for flipping because they ultimately had, you know, a curved surface and then two flat sides, and they just didn't want to. They didn't want to behave. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I waited out the mushrooms and their cook time. And um, I sampled it. It tasted good. <laughs> it's always good to taste your food. Make sure that it's not, you know, under-seasoned or gross. And then just waiting some more. I'm patiently... This recipe really tested my patience, I'll say that. Um, and I think I was making lunch at the same time. We ended up having sub sandwiches for lunch. So I put the rolls in the oven to um, toast a little. There I am just checking on them. And now it was finally time to work on the other vegetables that are going to go in this pot pie. So I added the carrots and the onions and I think that garlic to the <coughs> pardon me to the 
pan. This is the same pan that I've been cooking the mushrooms in. I'm not about to dirty a whole bunch of dishes. <laughs> and then after the onions were softened, I added the celery. Um, I realized at this point that I had let that stock in the back, the um, sauce, just uh, reduce way too much. So I had to add some water to that. And then um, the recipe had suggested that I throw out the carrot and celery and bay leaves that were in that broth, but I didn't want to. So I added them to my bowl to make stock with. And then all the dried mushrooms, which are now rehydrated, I pulled off um, and put on my cutting board and I chopped them up real fine and added them to the pot pie, which was part of the instructions. I made a basic roux um, using olive oil um, and flour and then added all the stock to that. Um, stirred that up really thoroughly so that um, we have a nice sauce. Consulted the recipe again just to see what we needed to do. Um, and then I added all my mushrooms and vegetables, um, other vegetables rather, to the pot along with at least half, maybe three quarters of that bag of frozen peas. And I you know, mixed those up and got the peas back in the freezer. And then I didn't like how well mixed I had been able to achieve it with my um, whisk. So I just mixed it up with my hands. My hands are clean. Um, and then I tasted the broth, seasoned it with soy sauce, tasted it again with a new spoon. Um, and called that done. So back over at my workstation, it was time to work um, with the phyllo dough for the topping. I've never used phyllo dough before and we'll definitely call this a learning moment because apparently I needed to take it out of the freezer like three hours beforehand. Um, but I didn't. So what I did instead was I defrosted it in the microwave. <laughs> Oh, I don't recommend this, but um, essentially between each layer, I'm brushing it with vegan butter um, because that's what I had on hand. I had made a vegan chocolate cake. I had extra butter. I used butter. The recipe called for olive oil, but I actually did not have the like seven tablespoons of olive oil that it wanted me to have. So butter it was. Um, defrosting the phyllo dough in this manner also did have the side effect of the pages kind of stuck together. So <coughs> overall, it just wasn't the best, but it looked great coming out and it was very crispy. The individual sheets of the phyllo really did, um, you know, come through, which was great. So got that out um, and this is what it looked like when it was all done. If you decide to try it, please let me know how it goes for you because I definitely um, struggled a little bit. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, if you are at all curious about what a disaster this was to clean up, <laughs> please check this video. I'll show you all, all that I had to deal with. <laughs> Otherwise, have a good one and I'll see you in the next one.